Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is September 2nd, 2015, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, another shocking video surfaces as Planned Parenthood sells intact aborted babies, and one just fell out of the womb. The fetus was already in the vaginal canal whenever the food put wow. her in the it just fell out. Then, a worker at an Arby's fast food restaurant in Florida refused to serve a police officer which is a good example of the growing animosity toward law enforcement. Damn it, you burger punk! You son of a... <laughs> Plus, undercover FBI agents were sent to spy on the Burning Man Festival to test out their new intelligence collection technologies. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. So I'm sitting out here in one of the neighborhoods in Fox Lake. The police are back out. They're searching around again. I'm going out trying to follow up on leads based on uh, the press conference earlier. They said they were going and checking on social media follow or leads that they had. So I guess they're following up on that. The helicopters are back up in the sky now and they're directly overhead. helping out with the police on the ground. Now this is the back side. This is an abandoned building. Right down here is where uh, Officer Glenovich was uh, shot at and killed by the uh, two white male suspects and black suspect. Not sure, sure who which one shot or if all three shot or one of the questions asked in the press conference earlier if the sh uh, cop was shot with his own gun. There's been conflicting reports as well saying that uh, his weapon was taken from him and then some people are saying that they actually found his weapon at the scene so they're not really giving us a whole lot. But just further down that way around the corner is where they have the crime scene blocked off. Down there, I walked down that way and the cops stopped me. But you can see in this building right here that's been abandoned. On the other side I walked around and you can see where they kicked in the doors yesterday I'm assuming now you can see there's a, a railway through here it's possible that the uh, the guys that uh, shot at the officer could have jumped on one of these trains because all I've seen come through here so far there's MARTA trains that uh, carry passengers but this guy's posted up over here watching stopping and talking to people and here you go So that was Joe Biggs up in Fox Lake. Now, as he was reporting on this, this isn't even the most recent attack on a police officer. We also saw attack in Massachusetts where somebody fired at a squad car. And this is a growing problem. We've seen attacks in Houston and Fox Lake and Massachusetts. And not to forget the two officers that were gunned down in their patrol car up in the New York area. 
So it's a growing problem. And we see all this violent rhetoric of people saying, go out there and kill the cops, oink, oink, bang, bang, and all this other stuff. And I would caution anybody who would go out and, and try to fire on these police officers, besides the fact that they're on red alert right now, having had multiple attacks all across the country, but also to the fact that the people trying to stir you up to go out and kill these police officers, to instigate violence against these police officers, whether it's on the internet or on the radio or anything else, more than likely are not going to go out and commit that violence themselves. They're gonna say, yeah, we should do this, and we, we, we. No, they want you to do that violence. They're gonna sit at home behind their microphone, behind their laptop camera, and watch you go to jail for these crimes that are being committed against these police officers. Now, we all know there's a lot of uh, police violence in the country, more so now because we see a lot of camera phone videos. We see officers shoot a guy, then walk up and plant some evidence on him. Or, you know, we see people get choked out on a videotape or beaten to death over the course of 20 minutes in the case of Kelly Thomas. And people are upset about that. And you have the right to be upset about that. But you definitely need to caution yourself if you let that anger turn into violence, especially against the police force, which is already itching. We see all these purchases of the MRAPs and the body armor and the rubber bullets and all these other things, the tear gas, that they're itching to use. And now they have somewhat of an excuse because they say, well, I can't even go fill up my car without somebody shooting at me, so I need this heavy armor and this MRAP and all these other things that they have. So, you know, it's going to become a larger issue if these attacks continue to happen on police officers. Do some need to be uh, dealt with as far as the legal system is concerned? Absolutely. We see the bad police officers pretty much on a daily basis, but there are also plenty of decent police officers who aren't out there committing violence against the populace at large, and you can't just walk up and kill a guy because he's wearing a uniform. That's the same reason that a lot of the police officers use as far as harassment of people. Well, he looked like a gang member. Well, what's a gang member look like? A guy who has his pants sagging or a guy who wears a hoodie, or this guy looked like a meth addict or he looked like he was carrying. Now, those are the same tactics that some law enforcement officers use to harass the general populace. You can't use those same tactics saying he has a uniform just to go and harass a police officer. So hopefully people will learn this sooner than later. But we see this because this has happened where law enforcement is being discriminated against when they just walk into a fast food restaurant. And this is a situation that happened at a Arby's, and this is in Florida, where a officer was refused service because he was wearing his uniform, but the officer was wearing their uniform. So they walk into the store and they, uh, the, uh, one of the employees say, no, I'm not gonna serve you here because you're a police officer. And then somebody came out and said, they demand an apology from Arby's. And I'm sure Arby's is gonna say, well, we don't have this uh, outlook in general. It's just this uh, particular employee who chose to make this call on a particular day. But you know, things are heating up. They definitely hope, I definitely hope personally that they de-escalate because we, yes, we have seen uh, negative instances in places like Ferguson and other places around the country, but you also saw positive things in places like Charleston, South Carolina. When I went out there, the police, they were present, but they didn't have MRAPs, they didn't have the big body armor. They were just there pretty much for a crowd control capacity, you know, blocking off streets and doing things of that nature. But you know, you see that and now you see other things come out of that. And that's what we saw with this uh, shooter of uh, the two police crew, or excuse me, uh, the two uh, TV crew people. He comes out and he shoots two people and says he was inspired by Dylan Roof to start this race war. And to the people of Charleston, South Carolina, I'm sure they are quite disgusted to see that this man used the actions of Dylan Roof to justify going out and killing somebody because the people of Charleston, South Carolina, especially the families of the victims and the members of the church out there, said we don't want any racial violence. We don't want this summer of rage or fall of rage or whatever it's going to turn into. We said They said that they wanted a peaceful solution to these situations. And yes, while they do hope Dylan Roof is held accountable for his actions, he, they don't want that to go over, to spill over to anybody else, whether it's a racial group or religious group or whatever type of group. They don't want that violence to continue because of the actions of Dylan Roof. They're quite disgusted with him, as am I, and anybody else who witnesses these things. And I'm also disgusted on this man who chose to take his firearm and fire on two people for uh, doing their jobs out there. And it wasn't because they were reporters, it was just they were two people out there doing their jobs. And he said he had beef with uh, the young lady. Even if he did, that's not a justification to go and kill these innocent people and wound the uh, innocent lady that they were reporting on. Now let's talk about people with firearms in general. But it's, because it's getting to the point where some people are somewhat encouraging people to uh, SWAT as to speak, people who are open carrying or even concealed carrying. Now, for anybody who's not abreast, 
Swatting is something that gained in popularity among uh, video game players. Maybe playing, you know, whatever video game. They begin uh, beaten by the guy, so they call up the police st police station, say, "Hey, this guy, he has a you know a gun. He's holding the family hostage." So then the police officers or the SWAT team will come busting the door and catch this guy playing video games and eating Cheetos in his underwear. It's like, "Hey, there's no hostage situation here." But now it's getting to the point where they're just doing this to people on the street, and we have this article, and it says, "As more states relax rules about open carrying of guns." The coalition to stop gun violence has taken to social media to urge the public to assume gun toters are trouble and to call cops on anyone they feel to be a threat. And if you scroll down the article, you can actually see the tweet. And they basically said, if you see someone carrying a firearm in public, openly or concealed, and they definitely put concealed in there, and have any doubts about their intent, call 911 immediately and ask police to the scene. And it goes on and says, you have no idea who this person is, so you need to take the ultimate precautions. And they basically go on to say that you don't know who this person is, so you need to call the police officers on them. And I do understand that a person walking around with a loaded firearm can be somewhat jarring to some people, but you also have to realize the fact that they have people listed here as concealed carriers. Now, many people are licensed concealed carriers. Some people have a constitutional carry in their states, which is, to me, perfectly fine and legal. But basically, I have the concern of, you know, some guy going to the local convenience store. He has a concealed carry firearm. He reaches up for a can of peas, and now he has a SWAT team called on him. And we've seen the reports and the videos of people inside of uh, convenience stores or whatever stores, the big box stores, and the cops come and they just shoot the guy instantly because he's holding a BB gun that's pointing at the ground. And I don't want that kind of deal coming around because it was even a uh, police chief that was recently, I guess for lack of a better term, swatted because some bounty hunters got a bogus tip via social media that there was a fugitive harbored in a police chief's home. They show up and then they have to have it out with the police chief. Luckily, nobody was harmed in that incident, but these are the type of things that can easily happen. You have to take these things under heavy consideration before you uh, endanger somebody else's well-being. Now, while we're talking about the endangerment of people, we've heard a lot about uh, poaching, people going after lions and tigers and bears, trying to get tusks from elephants, but now they're coming after albino children. And it's a very bizarre practice in Tanzania. Hunters in Tanzania have been targeting children for their limbs, believing that they possess supernatural power. So, you know, they moved away from the animals and, you know, their valuables to now targeting children, which is a very horrific practice and something we definitely don't want to see continue any place in the world. And we'll give you more as that situation develops. Now, there's the festival Burning Man, which to my understanding is kind of a, a place for people to unplug and basically come together in a community atmosphere. But now we have the reports that the feds are basically using this as a huge surveillance practice because we've seen the reports and documented how if you go to a certain concert, they may have uh, things in the crowd scanning you. If you go to a football game or some other sporting event, you may have to endure some type of TSA back check or a pat down. And now we have undercover FBI agents spy on Burning Man Festival to prevent Terrorism. Oh, isn't that just the uh, sweetheart of the day? And it says they're using intelligence gathering at the festival since uh, 2010. And they say it's to uh, take down terrorism. And this is the 29th Burning Man Festival, festival taking place in Nevada. And the FBI said free expression among attendees was actively encouraged. Well, if you know the feds are going to be documenting your every move, you may somewhat not have the freest of expression. Because my understanding, there can be uh, some rather uh, free-spirited people out there. I'm not going to go too much into that. But just let people know that if you go out in public, you can be surveilled. Because it always makes me laugh. People, they'll see a camera like a news crew or somebody holding an a iPhone or whatever. And they'll freak out like, oh, don't get me on camera. Like, bro, there are cameras everywhere. You're already on camera. And this guy just may put it on his YouTube page if he has an iPhone. But you got the feds documenting your activity to see if you're up to something. It's uh, very, uh, very strange times indeed. Now, this is a story that we're going to cover a little bit more later on in our show when Leanne McAdoo and Rob Dew, they were in the seat earlier today on the Alex Jones Show talking about the ninth video documenting Planned Parenthood. Now, so far, we've seen videos of people saying, uh, what are the best body parts, haggling over body parts, like they were, you know, chicken meat at the butcher's. We saw people talking about they want to use the proceeds of said body parts to go buy Lamborghinis. Uh, one worker who used to work in one of these facilities said that she became uh, physically disgusted because she thought, you know, aborted babies, they were dead. But then she said,